Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. This is Night Cam reporter Tim Pamplin. We've got a horse on the loose in Highland Park of all places. Officers trying to lasso this thing. Get it back to the stables. We'll bring you to the scene coming up. Well, we begin, though, with protesters rallying outside a packed Saline Board of Education meeting. Hundreds came out, split over the new sex ed curriculum targeted for special needs students. On one side, parents who believe this is far too explicit. On the other, parents who believe it's much needed to protect already vulnerable students. Mara McDonald live in Celine tonight. And Mara, have we got a final decision yet from the board? Devin, we do not. As a matter of fact, this board meeting is still going on. It's four hours into it and people are still going up to the podium to give their public comment. I do believe it's a step too far. I think it's five steps too far. Raylan Davis is the mom rallying parents to urge the Celine Board of Ed to vote no on a proposed sex ed curriculum for specific special needs students. It's called Positive Prevention Plus and is used in multiple states, including some school districts in Michigan. I can't show you some of the material because it is visually explicit, including stick figures demonstrating a variety of sexual behaviors and positions. I'm tired of my son being a pawn in this argument. Most of those opposing this do not have a child that qualifies for this curriculum. Most of the arguments people have stem from propaganda being put out that is purposely false and misleading. The curriculum was created by a doctor and nurse in California. It's heavy on imaging rather than text for special needs learners. This curriculum violates the values and preferences of a majority of parents in the school district. Community opinion on the appropriateness is split and some parents fear it will make its way into the gen ed population. Please don't generalize. Please don't call us uncompassionate. Please don't call us transphobic when what we're here for is a desire for a better curriculum, but not this one. Proponents say the curriculum can be customized for individual needs. If a parent doesn't want their student learning about anal sex, they can exclude that from the lesson. And is needed for these special learners who can be vulnerable to abuse. The whole point of this is to protect these kids. Back here live, the board may not have taken a vote yet, but they have up until this point made it pretty clear where they stand. If this vote is taken tonight, barring some major upheaval, you're looking at six board members in favor and one opposed. We're live in Celine tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Keep watching right down here as we're now uh, just an hour away from midnight. All right, Mara. An FDA advisory panel has recommended approval of Pfizer COVID vaccine shots for children ages 5 to 11. Now this recommendation, if adopted by the FDA and the CDC, would make some 28 million kids eligible for the vaccine. Dr. Frank McGeorge with a closer look at today's vote. Frank? We expected a vigorous debate because the risk-benefit equation is different when you're talking about children. Now, we've actually also learned some members of the committee were the focus of a coordinated email attack over the weekend by parents opposing the vaccine. The FDA's Dr. Peter Marks actually started the meeting by saying there are passionate feelings about this vaccine on both sides. I want to acknowledge the fact that there are strong feelings that have clearly been expressed by members of the public, both for and against the use of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine under emergency use authorization for this age group. At the center of the debate, how to balance the benefits against the risks. While the risk from COVID is much lower for children, cases are climbing and there have been hospitalizations and deaths. Between January 1st, 2020 and October 16th, 2021, there were 94 COVID-19 associated deaths reported among children 5 to 11 years of age. More than 5,200 children have also been diagnosed with MIS-C, a serious multi-system inflammatory syndrome. But the panel of outside experts was concerned about the risk of myocarditis, especially in males. This is the principal concern that uh, people have regarding uh, use of these mRNA vaccines in, in children. The CDC presented several models that showed the benefits of the vaccine outweighed the risk of myocarditis, except when COVID cases fell very low. Some panelists argued in support of the vaccine. To me, the question is um, pretty clear. We don't want children to be dying of COVID, even if it is far fewer children than adults, and we don't want them in the ICU. Others voiced the fear of some parents when it comes to choice. I'm just worried that if we say yes, that the states are going to mandate administration of this vaccine 
to children in order to go to school, and I do not agree with that. Now, the root of the problem is we will never know the true risk of rare side effects in this group unless the vaccine is made widely available, and the panel had to weigh that versus the known risks of COVID to this age group. Back to you. Yeah. Dr. McGeorge, thank you. Governor Gretchen Whitmer, though, says her administration has pre-ordered 287,000 doses of the Pfizer vaccine in anticipation of final approval. Governor calling it a game changer to ensure in-person learning will continue. What we want to do is make sure that parents know this vaccine is available for their kids so that they can go out and get their kids inoculated. We do it for a variety of illnesses. This has high efficacy. Um, it is incredibly easy to get, and soon for 5 to 11-year-olds, that will be the case. And so we want to encourage parents to get their kids vaccinated. And where do we stand tonight? Right now, 66.9% of Michiganders, just a hair under 67%. Michiganders 12 years and older have received at least one dose of the vaccine. Detroit City Council has unanimously approved an ordinance that would take guns away from domestic abusers. It's named after Detroit Police Sergeant Elaine Williams, who was shot and killed in her home. Police say by her live-in partner. Jason Colthorpe, live tonight. I'd imagine Sergeant Williams' family was very happy to hear this, Jason. Boy, her mom certainly was, Kim. And this, this ordinance, by the way, mirrors a national law, but it's not just symbolic. Uh, council says this has teeth because it gives city attorneys the power to prosecute in these cases. And uh, when her mom learned of this ordinance, it moved her to tears. I miss her dearly. Christine Bogoski counseled her daughter Elaine Williams many times during her relationship with Eddie Johnson that she says was abusive. Felt like I should have did more. Maybe went to her house and stayed or something with her, you know, um, but it hurts terribly. The kids have lived with Christine over a very tough two years. The depression that they went through and getting them counseling and Amari seeing a lot of what his dad did and saying how he hit her in the nose, you know, and, and, and all that like stuff. Shot. Yeah, see, he, he was there when he did it. Elaine Williams was a wonderful woman and um, she's missed by so many people. Dr. LaDonna Combs has done the research on domestic violence. Between 2019 and 2020, Domestic violence rose 66%, um, and th those were DV homicides. 85% of that number were due to gun violence in Detroit. She says anything that offers law enforcement more help can reduce those numbers. And for Christine, doing it in her daughter's name is everything. I cried and I cried happy tears um, because it really made me feel good. Just them doing that and having my daughter's name out there because I will never let her be forgotten. Yeah, the other statistic that's pretty staggering in this in 2020, there were 23 domestic violence murders in Detroit alone. By the way, DPD hosting a walk this Friday in Sergeant Elaine Williams memory. So she is certainly not going to be forgotten. We're live downtown tonight. Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. OK, Jason, thanks. Detroit police releasing new video tonight of a vehicle of interest in a shooting that left a teenager critically injured. Not really clear video, but you can see at the top of your screen a dark SUV driving by. This shooting happened overnight on Stalin in northwest Detroit. Police say someone shot into a home at least 13 times and the teen was shot in the head. Crime Stoppers tonight offering a $5,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest. Charges have been dropped against a Detroit police officer charged with shooting journalists with rubber bullets during a protest in May of 2020. This all happened during the first weekend of protests against police brutality in downtown Detroit. A judge dismissed felony charges against Corporal Daniel DeBono, citing a statute that grants officers immunity where an unlawful assembly is declared. Prosecutors argue the protest was cleared and the journalists were not a part of it. Massive police presence tonight near McNichols and Woodward and Highland Park. Officers were called to the area after a horse got loose in the neighborhood. They were desperately trying to keep it from reaching Woodward traffic. Tim Pamplin on the scene with the night cam.
Yes, this is right off of Woodward Avenue, Woodward and Louise. There you see Blackjack the horse. He doesn't want to go home. Home is in Belleville. He was out visiting a family up in northwest Detroit, but he got loose, and now they're trying to corral it here. OK, officers from Highland Park have it surrounded. Can they get that rope around its neck? And there they go. The horse is secure. That's one of the mounted officers from Detroit Police helping out. It's been quite an evening for old Black Jack. He, he, he got a loose from the yard and uh, one thing led to another. Yes, you can see Woodward Avenue just in the background there, very close up in Sky 4. Let's take a look at some of the video from the chopper. Officers thought they had the animals surrounded on Hamilton, but not so much. It ended up galloping away. Officers in hot pursuit. It's kind of a sticky situation when it comes down to trying to contain a full-size uh, horse uh, in an urban uh, environment. After the officers caught their breath and the animal was contained, time for a couple of photographs. Here's Black Jack's human mum. He wanted to see the sights of Detroit. He never gets, he never comes here. Quite an interesting evening for these Highland Park officers. Something they've probably never seen before. First time for me. We're very grateful to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> yes, quite a tense evening, but in the end, no harm, no foul. They're heading straight to the stable. He's got a story to tell tonight to his stable mates. That's a scene in Highland Park with the night camp, Tim Pamplin, a local four. <laughs> In Highland Park. Got into the big city, just wanted to see the sights. <laughs> I don't blame them at all. You ain't blaming, yep. you're right. Our Silla Adam family is nearly crushed to death. Glass went flying. Um, the whole RV was shaking back and forth. We'll tell you how the family escaped serious injury coming up. Let's check in with Paul. Yeah, if you're planning for the kids at the bus stop tomorrow, dry for both bus stops. Uh, a little on either side of 40 tomorrow. Warmer to the east, colder to the west. In the afternoon, 57. But that's not only warmer than today, but less wind. So it's going to be a little better today for the kids than it was uh, tomorrow than it was today. Now, coming up in about 10 minutes, we'll talk about the forecast for the week ahead and La Nina and the potential impact on this coming winter. Stick around. We'll have that for you in just a few. Hey, Paula, first, police calling a local mother a hero tonight for her actions inside of Kroger. How she fought off a man who is now charged with trying to abduct her daughter. That's next. The most of